Hello everybody, this is Psychic Isaacs here, Gwyneth Isaacs. Um, I'm here today doing my podcast and what I'm going to discuss today is um, something that I noticed on my friend George Ewer's website this morning. Um, he was talking about uh, the thinning of the veil. And as you know, that's something I've been talking about the last few days. Um, And he said uh, that this was a topic that needed further investigation. Now, I fully agree with him. One thing that he said was that it might be interesting if um, the space-time continuum that the veil between space and time and the veil between the worlds um, if that could be further tugged on and maybe completely ripped apart by the um, use of methods of randomization Now, randomization is really, really interesting because this is how uh, tarot reading works. It's how all methods of divination that involve the casting of lots, like anything that involves tossing coins or throwing dice or reading tea leaves and seeing the random supposed to be... um, locations of tea or coffee grounds in the bottom of a cup that's how it works it works through randomization and one thing that he mentioned in his post this morning I'm not sure if it was him or if it was a correspondent or if he was replying to a correspondent that was posting on his site and um But anyway, he was talking about how if you could pull on these threads, you might very well end up ripping open the veil between the worlds. Now that is something that I would absolutely love to investigate because the veil between the worlds is a source of great delusion on this earth that um, as a psychic I can see through that veil and I've always been able to see through it that there's actually not just one veil there's a number of veils there's the space-time continuum veil okay which is the illusion that space and time are separate and they're not okay they're just two sides of the same mirror but it's the same mirror now the other veil that's there is the veil there's three there's more than three but In this world, we normally think of there being a middle earth and a lower earth and an upper earth, okay? Um, The lower earth is where ghosts and uh, UFO phenomena and um, demonic entities come from, Um, that is devilish entities all of that sort of very um, low vibrational frequency manifestations that's where they come from this uh, middle earth is where we all as supposedly mortal human beings live uh, what we normally regard as being physical reality and the upper earth is the realm of God and angels and uh, positive spiritual influences and organ energy and um, all and healing energy, Reiki influences, um, 
all of this sort of positive life energy. Now, the veils are thinning. Maybe I'm not so interested in ripping the veil between the lower earth and the middle earth. I think I would be happy if that one stayed just where it was. But um, I'm not into ripping apart that one. Um, but the veil between upper earth or heaven um, and this earth it would be extremely beneficial if that veil was no more because then um, the way would be open basically for uh, all sorts of positive influences to come through on this earth and for a lot of people to be helped because these positive beautiful spiritual entities are there to help us all but they have a problem in that so many of the world don't even know that they're there, you know, and I've known that they've been there my entire life, but so many people don't know that they're there, that there's guardian angels looking after every single one of us, but they are there and they are real, and I would be very, very much in favour of that veil coming down. Because when it comes down, those spiritual, positive, beautiful influences are going to flood into the earth, and there's going to that's there's going to be a mighty transformation at that time. Now, in reality, none of us probably have to do anything to make any of these veils go away, because they're all coming down anyway. All of the ancient prophecies discuss this. And um, they all go into that we are going to have to pick whose side we're on once and for all. And a lot of that is going to come down to attitude that even if you don't... Um, How can I put this? I think that C.S. Lewis said it best. He wrote a book called The Last Battle, which is the last of the Narnia Chronicles. And that book was basically... Um, I, don't, I mean, it's been out for some time. They're probably going to be making a movie about it, or they might have even already finished this movie. Um, I think that they have, actually. I think they made all of the Narnia movies all at once, and they're just releasing them one at a time. But in the last battle, it's a long story, and I'm not going to tell it all, because that'll spoil it for everyone. But in the last battle, what happens is that... The land of Narnia is destroyed and the one who destroys it is Aslan. And you might think, well, why did he do that? You know, there was, there, there came into Narnia a completely evil force and it was going to utterly destroy Narnia anyway. And it was going to completely enslave all of the um, beautiful people who were there, the centaurs and the, the elves and the, the, you know, the griffins and all the rest of them, and the dwarfs and um, the, the, the um, tree people and the river gods. And they were all going to be enslaved and they were all going to be destroyed. And so Aslan comes in and he destroys the world anyway. But before he does it, he um, takes all of the people who love him. And remember, I'm not just talking about humans here because this is Narnia. And not all of the people in Narnia are humans. In fact, humans are the minority of the people in Narnia. Um... He takes them all and divides them 
to the right and to the left. And all of those who love him, even if they didn't really know who he was, but if they love what's good and true and right, then he says, right, you are coming to the true Narnia. And all of those, even those who claimed to follow Aslan, if they acted out of fear, um, and cooperated with the, the, the Narnian version of the devil, which is Tush, then out of their fear, then, you know, they were utterly, they, they went to somewhere that wasn't quite explained properly in the book, but the implication is that they were sent to a Narnia version of hell or that they were destroyed somehow and um, the third lot the lot that I would call the dwarf preppers they were left in another world where they were in some sort of stable and Lucy was there and she was trying to give them beautiful food from the spirit world to eat but all they could see was pieces of straw and goat dung and horse dung that was in the stable and um, the thing is that that is more or less I, I believe he saw something there that that's the choice that we're going to be given that this world is at the tail end of its being. That's what all the ancient prophecies say. We have got a choice and it's not just a choice of two things that um, we have a choice where we can act out of fear and let our fear lead us into cooperation with the powers that be that fear our fear of them empowers them if we stop being afraid of them then they lose their power over us if we stand up for our God-given rights as human beings under the common law then they lose their power over us because their rule of law is not legitimate. It is not the legitimate law of God. And there's no way that you can tell me that the sort of unjust things that they are doing, for instance, prosecuting people for selling milk and eggs what go and google it oh don't google it sorry go to another search engine <laughs> go to another search engine and search for it there's still search engines out there other than the big g okay <laughs> go and search for it on the internet and you'll see they're persecuting people for selling milk and eggs you know, you can't tell me that that's legitimate law and order. You know, that is not the law of God. The law of God is this, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Walk in peace and love and harmony with all creatures and do not let yourself be intimidated. Now, the thinning of the veils, which is really what I'm getting to. What George Ewer suggested was that we all start to pull at the edges of the veil, at the corners of the veil, 
Now, in any pleated cloth, the weakest part of the cloth is the corner of the pleat. That is the part that's constantly ironed, and that's always the part that wears out first. And it wears out by little threads starting to stick out. And if you pull on them, if you pull on a small thread in that corner of that pleat, you'll eventually pull the whole garment apart if you do it for long enough. Now, divination is pulling on the corner of the pleat of the veil and this is how it's doing it. I'm a scientist by training. I have a science degree, Bachelor of Science from the University of Melbourne and I um, my degree is in environmental science and geography but one of the areas of science that I'm most interested in is quantum physics and in quantum physics they have a very famous thought experiment called Schrodinger's cat and that is um, by the way no cats are actually harmed in the performance of this experiment it's a thought experiment it goes on inside your head okay just thought I'd say that you get a cat and you put it in a box with a cyanide laced piece of meat and even if the cat's not hungry when you put it in the box sooner or later it's going to gnaw at the meat and when it gnaws at the meat it's going to die without opening the box how do you tell if the cat's alive or dead well you know you could say well weigh the cat before it goes in the box and then you know but that won't work because <laughs> it's the same weight it's just the meat goes into the cat's stomach that won't work okay now this is a tricky one how do you tell you don't is the cat alive or is it dead neither it's neither alive or dead in the space-time continuum okay if you open the box you'll just you may disturb the cat just before it starts eating the meat you've disturbed the space-time continuum you know and change the course of history because that was going to be a dead cat but now it's a live cat because you disturbed it and stopped it from eating the meat okay now you might think well that's pretty a pretty silly story what's the point of that the point of it is is it doesn't actually relate to anything to do with cats it's got everything to do with electrons if you look for an electron this is going to amaze a lot of you but I assure you it's true it's been scientifically verified numerous times if you look for an electron and are expecting to find a particle you'll see a particle if you're expecting to see a wave you'll see a wave you'll see a cathode ray okay now is it a particle or is it a wave depends on what you're looking for Schrodinger's cat is it alive or is it dead who knows until you open the box and have a look none of us can tell but I know the answer okay and the answer to that question is this that all is energy it's the same answer that is given by the Vedas, by Edgar Cayce, by David Wilcock, by the ancient alchemists, by the ancient Egyptians, by the Taoists, by the Akidoka, by any ancient mystic tradition. They all say the same thing. It's all 
energy, all energy, that matter is an illusion. And that's a deep mystery that is at the heart of the whole universe, that one is, that we're all energy and that matter is an illusion. You think you're actually looking at me? You're looking at a video recording of me. Light particles have travelled from my face and hit the camera, been recorded on a microchip, been fed by radio signal to a central server that records it as magnetic information on a hard drive. Where does physicality come into it? It's all energy that I'm being transmitted via electromagnetic energy to your computer. So, am I the ghost in the machine? Am I the glitch in the matrix? Are we all glitches in the matrix? The truth is, Neo, that there is no spoon. Now I get it. Now I hope you get it. If you want me to help you a bit more to negotiate the space-time continuum, okay, I can see a bit further beyond the veil than a lot of other people. And you can contact me for a reading. I work through Psychic TV. My ID number at Psychic TV is 7227. Their website is www.psychictv.com.au and also through Psychic Lounge. I'm usually logged on after about 8 o'clock at night Western Standard Time but I'm also often logged on during the day um, so check by the site but your best chances of catching me are after 8 o'clock Western Standard Time in WA, okay, that's after 10 o'clock in the eastern states and I usually stay logged on until about midnight. Now, if you are in the uh, Geraldton Granif area, you can make a booking with me for a private consultation um, find me on Facebook, just go to the search box and type Gwyneth Isaacs and you'll find me on Facebook and PM me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now everybody, I don't think I've gnawed even now on this universe particle quite enough. So there's probably going to be more videos on this topic. This veil of separation needs to be ripped up.
we all need to get in a positive mindset because the things of what we see over this next little while, especially after this week, especially during this week, the things that we are focused on are going to be the things that manifest in our lives. Everybody is going to get what they want. So make sure that what you want is a good and peaceful and happy Holy Spirit inspired life because then that's the most beautiful solution for everybody. The Holy Spirit is wonderful. He's absolutely amazing. The way that he does everything makes everything grow, cooperate together and live in peace and harmony. Yep. Well, I'm just about up to 30 minutes now. So I'll have to be saying adios to all of you people out there. And remember, come by Psychic TV. Come by the Psychic Lounge. Come and see me. You know, I'd love to help you out. And you have a great evening, won't you? And I'll be in touch again real soon. See you later.